Falcon Zero. Captain Zero. Research Explorer in Time and Space. in the front. Sit here. Now the headpiece. Easy. Well, that just about does it, Jess. I've seen him all together in one piece. Do you really think he'll work? He'd better, after all the time we've spent on him. Stand by to test. Roger, the robot is finally completed. Captain, his eye flashed. That's because he recognizes his name. He's almost human. For our purposes, Jet, he's much better than human. Roger can operate under temperatures and pressures that no human could possibly stand. And he's capable of recording them very accurately. Boy. That flashing eye of his not only enables him to see where he's going, but it automatically photographs and files everything it sees. And he's more powerful than any 20 humans put together. Man, maybe we ought to check him over again before we test him. No, Roger's ready to operate right now. Stand by. Oh, and Jet, remember, Roger packs a lot of power. I don't anticipate any trouble, but if anything should go wrong, Stay out of his way, and let me handle him. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> you ready, Jeff? Ready, sir. Stand by. Roger. Roger, do you hear me? His eye flashed again. Apparently he's receiving me, all right. Make him do something. Okay. Roger, raise your right arm. Lower it. Raise your left arm. Lower it. Now 
Now stand up and walk toward me. Stop. Now move to the setting panel, turn toward me, and stand at attention. setting panel from any other panel. He has a built-in memory bank that associates words with pictures. Roger, move back to the chair and sit down. complicated system of motors, relays, and receptors, activated by audio, video, and kinetic impulses, and controlled by a highly sensitive electronic brain. Yes. Now, you've seen his response to direct vocal command. Yes. But when I set him on automatic, he will operate entirely on his own, without command. But how can he do that? His sensory perceptors will pick up stimuli, just as ours do. In fact, he should act and react very much like a human. Criminy. Okay. We're all set. Now, there's no way of knowing exactly what he's going to do, or how he's going to react to you, or to me, or to the laboratory. You'll just have to watch him carefully. I believe he'll react as you or I would under similar circumstances. But whatever happens, let me handle him, and don't antagonize him. Yes, sir. Okay. Stand by. Roger. Roger, you are on your own. Captain, he just turned his head and stopped. Maybe he's blown a fuse. No, when his eye is flashing, he's operating. But you mean he's just sitting there thinking? Well, something like that. Actually, he's acclimating himself to his new surroundings and recording everything he sees, hears, and feels. Captain, he's looking right at me. He's probably comparing you to your picture in his memory bank. Golly, I hope he likes me. You can't form opinions, Jeff, and the stimulus receptors have recorded nothing against you, so stop worrying. But why is he just standing there? Maybe something's gone wrong. No, his reaction is normal for a robot. He's just recording impressions for future reference. Golly, I hope he's recording a good impression of me. Look, he's moving again. What's he doing now? Just recording what he sees and filing under the proper category. You might say he's building up his memory. Is there any way he could get out of control? Well, a short circuit in his electronic brain could throw him off. Or one of his relays could jam, but there's not much danger. Captain, look at him. Is he, is he all right? Yes, he's all right. Golly. He sure doesn't like lightning. It's new to him, Jeff. He'll get used to it. You think he'll get used to me? Certainly. Why? Well, the way he keeps looking at me. Relax. But he's coming right towards me. On his own. Just stand still, Jeff. You'll be all right. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Captain, what's he want? I think he expects you to shake hands with him. Oh. How do you do? My pleasure. Happy to know you. Captain, he won't let go. Tell him to stop. Roger, stop. Stop, Roger. Captain! Don't get excited, Jetty. Just flip the synapse. Man, after this, let's just have him salute. He just needs a little adjustment, that's all. I could use a little adjustment myself. You'll be all right. Captain, look at him. He sure doesn't like the thunder and lightning. Maybe you'd better shut him off. Apparently, the static electricity in the air affects his electronic coordination. Better get those pliers. Captain, look out! Back, Roger, back! Back, Roger, back! Back, Roger! Jeff, cut the switch in the back panel. Yes, sir. Good. What do you suppose is wrong with him, Captain? The electrical discharge from the lightning set up a disturbance in the kinetic relay system. He'll be all right now. Throw on the switch again and stand by to materialize. Yes, sir. Materialize? Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. Roger is. Roger? That's right. Roger, move to the materialization chamber and stand by. As I told you, Jet, Roger can operate in places where no human could possibly exist. He's built to withstand great extremes in pressure, and he isn't affected by intense heat or cold. He doesn't require oxygen as we do, nor will he be affected by cosmic rays or lack of gravity. In other words, Jet, Roger the robot is the ideal space explorer, and if we can materialize him to other planets, he'll be able to move along the surface while his photographic eye and other recording instruments Transmit information to us direct. Boy. Stand by to activate the view screen to the planet Venus. Yes, sir. But Captain. Yes? Why would you utilize Roger to Venus? Why not Mars? Because Venus is more like Earth than any other planet in our solar system. It has a surface gravity nearly that of Earth, and the prevailing temperature isn't much greater. We're pretty certain there's no life as we know it on Mars, but we don't know about Venus. How far away is Venus, Captain? Step over the planet assembly and I'll show you. The distance varies depending upon where it is in its orbit. Now, as you know, Mercury is the first planet in order of distance from the Sun. Then comes Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and finally Pluto. All of them revolving around the Sun in their own orbit. Now, when Venus and Earth are on the opposite side of the Sun, their distance apart is over 161 million miles. But when Venus and Earth are together on the same side of the sun, they're only 24 and a half million miles apart. Only? Well, astronomically speaking, Jen, 24 and a half million miles isn't very far. Don't forget, the nearest star is over a billion, billion miles away. Yeah, that's right, but 24 and a half million miles is still pretty far to go, even in a rocket ship. Especially when we don't know what we'll find after we get there. But that's where Roger the robot will be able to help us out. Bring up the voltage on the electroscope while I set the location for the planet Venus on the view screen. Yes, sir. Just light refraction and stand by. How can we see anything through all that fog? We can't. That's why the planet Venus has always been something of a mystery. No one has yet been able to pierce through that cloud of vapor surrounding it. But if we can materialize Roger direct to the surface... Roger. I am going to materialize you direct to the surface of the planet Venus. You will record everything you see, hear, and feel. Enter the materialization chamber.
Jet, stand by to materialize. Yes, sir. Captain. Jeff? Maybe we, maybe we ought to wait until the storm is over. It might affect Roger's operation again. There's no storm on Venus, Jet. Throw the switch. Yes, sir. But I sure wouldn't want, wouldn't want to be around when Roger got his wires crossed. Throw the switch, Jeff. Yes, sir. Now, as soon as Roger is materialized, we'll set the view screen to his channel and stand by to pick up his instrument recording. Yes, sir. Stand by. Transforming electrical impulse. Damn, that storm must be centered right on top of us now. Beginning to dematerialize. There he goes. chamber. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay, but what about Roger? Did he materialize to Venus? I don't know. But where is he? Petro. Yes, Captain. Patch in emergency power. Repair transistor tower at once. Yes, sir. But Captain, where's Roger? Stand by. According to the instruments, Jeff, Roger the robot is materialized somewhere in the United States. Man. We've got lights, Petro. Yes, Captain. Activate the radar detector. Set it for Roger's basic element total and see if you can locate him. Yes, sir. Acro. Yes, sir. Contact Washington, D.C. in the United States. Tell them to alert the country for Roger the robot and notify us the instant he's found. Use caution if approached. If Roger goes out of control, he could be extremely dangerous. Yes, sir. Any luck, Jeff? Not yet, sir. And I've almost covered the entire East Coast. Keep at it and work west. Right. Petro. Yes, Captain. How are you coming with those repairs? I'm afraid it's going to take a little time, sir, but we're doing our best. Okay, keep at it. Yes, sir. Yes? I just talked with the U.S. government, sir. They have nothing to report on Roger the robot. In fact, they refuse to take it seriously. Washington seems to think we're playing some kind of a joke. It'll be no joke if Roger goes out of control. Keep at them. Yes, sir. Any sign of him, Jeff? Not yet, sir. And I've already covered the entire East Coast and Middle West. That's strange. But, Captain... If he did materialize in the United States, wouldn't somebody have seen him by now and turned in a report? Not necessarily, Jeff. Don't forget, Roger is set on automatic. He could be hiding somewhere, recharging his batteries. But by now, he's ready to move. We've got to get him back in the laboratory before he comes into contact with people. You really think he'd be dangerous? I don't know. Maybe not. But on the other hand, he's still in the experimental stage. We don't know exactly what Roger might do. Crying. Captain. The radar detector. Where are you? Washington, West Coast. You picked him up all right. The signal's coming in stronger. He must be in the state of Oregon. No. But we're getting closer. Wait a minute. He's in California. Steady now. Get that, will you? Laboratory. This is Arcro. I just received another radio communique from the United States government. Yes? If there's a foreign robot in the country, they want to know how he got in without a passport. Tell them he was accidentally materialized. I did, but they say that's impossible. Never mind. I think we've located him. Look, Jet. The beat's almost steady now. He's in Northern California, all right. Wait a minute. He's in the city of San Francisco. Pinpoint the location while I activate the view screen. Right. I've got it. Good. Stand by. There's Alcatraz, the federal prison in San Francisco Bay. It's on an island, Jet, sometimes called the Rock. Stand by to refocus. I don't think even Roger would want to be there. There's a Golden Gate Bridge spanning the mouth of the harbor, but no sign of Roger. Shift focus one and a half degrees east. He must be around Fisherman's Wharf, Jet. The signal's getting stronger. Stand by. Got to be around here somewhere. There he is. Stay with him. We don't know what he might do. Jet, we haven't time to look at Seal. Get back on Roger. 
Refocus jet, quickly. That's Coit Tower on famous Telegraph Hill. Roger must be nearby. And I don't think he's signaling ships. There he is, and he's moving fast. Stay with him, Jet. Wait a minute, he's gone, but the signal's still strong. Refocus 10 seconds south. Good, stand by, Jet. He's in this area. He might even be on that cable car. Wait till it stops and the conductor turns it around. Hold it. There's Roger. Look at him spin that cable car. With one finger yet. We're lucky he's not on full power. Ten seconds east jet, hurry! Roger's on the south side of Market Street. There he is. Keep track of him and stand by. Wait a minute. Stand by, Jet. I don't know how he's going to react to that crowd. Look at them run. Check on Roger. Don't lose him. Refocus, Jet, quickly. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. Yep. We're coming up in San Francisco. We've got to get him back here, Jet, immediately. Tetro, we've got to activate the materialization chamber at once. Roger's going out of control. But the repairs aren't completed. Captain, the view screen's gone blank. Stand by to materialize. Great condensers are opening. Turboard activity is increasing. You'll never make it, Captain. You'll never make it. Voltage is building up. Spark gaps are closing. Captain, emergency transistors can't take the load. Patch in all the power we've got. Transforming to electrical impulses and beginning to materialize. Captain, we're gonna blow! Cut the power. He's in. Man. Stay back, Jet. He may still be out of control. a commissioned officer of the Zero Explorers in Time and Space and receive an official space passport and identification card. This passport entitles you to travel in accredited spaceships to any planet in our solar system. It also contains my official signature and photograph as well as regulations for space travel and procedure for rocket ship blast off. Just send your name and address to me, Captain Zero, in care of this station. Your letter will be forwarded to my laboratory by guided missile, and I will immediately send you your official space passport and identification card. So, till we meet again, fellow Z-men, good luck in time and space. Be sure to be standing by when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth, where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space.